A couple of years ago, we went on a mission trip to Clearsville. This was my first mission trip ever, and I was super excited. It was the last day of missioning, and uh, we went out in the we wanted to go out in the community to pray for the people, to pray for whatever they need. If it is healing, financial support, anything, we were there to pray and just speak to them and be with them, with Jesus, obviously. And uh, I was walking out of the bathroom, we were excited to go pray, and I felt God actually for the first time ever speak to me, saying. You need, to, you need to stay back and pray for the people going out. You need to intercede for them. So I was kind of uh, back and forth. I was like, no, I didn't hear right from God, but I really felt God told me, you need to stay and intercede. And I was like, okay, I'm going to be obedient, son. So I walked out where the missionaries were preparing to go out. Um, and I just, I just heard this one leader started speaking about treasure hunting. So treasure hunting is when you seek something that God has placed on your heart and in your mind. And um, that's a, a treasure that you need to go find. If it's a person, if it's a place, if it's a color, if it's a house, anything. That's, that's your treasure. That's his treasure. And suddenly I got this picture of a white house, two windows, a wooden door, and a flowered fence. And now I'm confused because, God, what does this mean? I, I thought I needed to, to stay back and pray. And you know what, as Vida and Son, I'm going to stay and pray. So uh, the, the missionaries went out and we stayed back to pray. And the first 20 minutes, next moment, the school runs in. She says, guys, there's a fire. She wanted to tell us that, guys, there's a fire, we should pray. But two guys, two guys and myself just stood up and we started running out to go help and see what we can do. Four houses burning and the flames high in the roof. And we didn't know what to do, but we just know that we are there and we can help. So we decided we are going to help. Whatever we can do, all the other missionaries standing outside try to calm the people and help get the kids secure and everything and we five guys we decided we're gonna go in and help so the people actually fell asleep inside the houses we had to wake them up and get them out and now we're trying to get in now what can we do and this one guy has the initiative to actually say guys let's go get a host pipe and see if we can bless some part of the fire because the fireman or the policeman hasn't arrived there yet and then so I run out to the right and I was like okay do you have a and they say no you know host pipe they go to the left do you have a host pipe and they say no and to the right, I freeze for a second <laughs> and I, I just look at this white house with two windows, a wooden door and a flowered fence. And then the moment I, I came back into reality and I ran and I wanted to ask, do you maybe have, and she said, yeah, you can have a hose pipe. And she gave me this hose pipe. So I ran back and I spoke to my, my friend, he's like, here's the hose pipe. He's like, bro, how did you do that so quick? And I was like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I can't explain it. So we plugged it in. But let me tell you another thing. This hose pipe was terrible. <laughs> we needed five guys to operate it. Two guys to, uh, to, to block the holes. The other guy to keep the hose pipe together. And the other guy to spray it. And one more guy to keep it at the tap because the thing didn't want to work. That was the best thing ever because we could keep each other accountable to do the right thing, to be safe. So we prayed. I don't know how long we were, but we were there for, I think maybe an hour or two. And we prayed for each other. We said, you're not dying together. We prayed in tongues. We were speaking over them while the flames are right next to us. We were, we were being there, helping as we can. And the firemen and the policemen arrived. And when the fire was blessed, the, the, the firemen came to us. Thank you for everything that you did. We really appreciate that your help is not needed while they did lost bits. And we walked out and we just looked at us and said, our work is not done. Our help is needed. So we went to go pray for people. So now there is this lady with crutches and she can walk 10 meters in under 10 minutes. <laughs> so we, used to, we laid hands on her. The kids laid hands on her right next to us. And next moment she could run 10 meters in under 2 seconds. So we went to another person that, that's house burnt down and he laid hands on him. He was shaking as he was crying. And we felt how the peace of God just rested upon his heart and how he calmed. And we knew that he was trusting that God was giving something better, a better life than before. And that God is going to open doors like never before. We prayed for a couple of people for financial support, for healing, for peace. And then afterwards, we just looked at each other and we said, you know what, we want to worship. So us seven guys, we closed our eyes and we, we started worshiping God. Any song that came to mind. A couple minutes later, I opened up and I saw the other missionaries join left and right. 
and I saw it before me, the kids on the ground listening to us and the community members of all religions, of all different races, just races, just, just looking at us and looking how we worship God. And it's such a terrible occurrence God used just to show His glory. And when He rocks up, He rocks up. And He changed their hearts. He changed my heart. That my life could have never been the same before. And I'm grateful for that moment because every prayer that I prayed after that was changed because of the glory of God on that one day. On that one day.